Radio check, anybody copy? Hi everyone, I'm Alice Kanniklen, and this is part one of episode 19, Native Earring Creators, on Kafi and Kwok. Kafi and Kwok is a podcast I created to celebrate and explore contemporary Native life in urban Alaska. This episode features Kavahine Danner, the artist and creator behind Kavahine Creations, an indigenous handmade earrings, merchandise, art, designs, and clothing shop based in Utkervik, Alaska. Some questions that guided this conversation were, how does culture and heritage influence your work? How do you feel about cancel or consequence culture, and what role does social media play in that? What are some unique challenges for rural artists versus urban artists? I reached out to Kava because I think she has a strong, thoughtful, and important voice for rural Alaskan artists growing a business via social media. Cancel culture, copyright issues, and contentious social media relationships have been a hot-button topic throughout the pandemic. So I hope you enjoy hearing from Kava's perspective in rural Alaska. My name is Kavine Kilomana. I was born and raised in Ukiavik, Alaska, um, but I was also raised in Anahola Kauai. My mom is Corinne Turok Danner, and my dad is Scott Creevy Danner. I'm Native Hawaiian, and I'm Inupak, and I'm an artist. So uh, that's who I am. I was born and raised in Utkalavik until fifth grade. Then I moved to Anchorage for, I think, a couple of years, but moved to Hawaii uh, for middle school and high school. And then when I graduated, I came back to Utkalavik. So that's kind of my story up until, you know, I graduated. And now I live in New Calgary. I have a family here and my family lives here. And that's who I am. Cool. And so when did, when did you move back? What, what year was So that? I moved back. That was 2015. So I graduated. Um, and then about, I want to say eight days after graduating, I moved back to Calgary. i really missed home. Yeah, it was, I didn't realize how much I missed home. And as soon as I graduated and turned 18, I was like, I'm going back home. I have to go. And my family was still living on Kauai. So I quickly found an internship here uh, for, uh, and I just moved back. Um, That's how much I missed being home. And, you know, there's always that homesickness, whether I'm in or Kauai, I'm always going to miss home. And I have two homes. So it's like this huge issue with me where it's like, I'm always going to be homesick and I have to deal with it somehow. So Horror. that's what happened. I know. <laughs> but, you know, there's so many, there's so many multicultural people here. There's Samoan, Inupak, there's Filipino Inupak people here. So what's great about living here is I have so many people to relate to. And I have so many conversations with people where they're like, I relate to that too, you know, and even probably living in Anchorage for you. You're like, I can't stand Anchorage. I need to go back to a Then when you get here, you're like, man, I really miss my friends in Anchorage. It's like constant homesickness. We're a multicultural child. It's never ending homesickness. When you're back home, you don't have to explain yourself to anyone, you know, like exactly. you just chill out, like you can just chill out and like eat your muktuk and eat your kwak and you good. But like, yeah, you know, like, <laughs> they're always asking questions and all they always want like, answers. Yes. Exactly. Yeah. So when I tell them, like, you know, when I tell people I have two homes, I have a Gelvik and Kauai, or um, if I have some cousins who say I have two homes, I, my home is Anchorage, my home is a Gelvik. 
a lot of people don't understand it because they don't understand like the connection you have with both places. And it's like, I'll never not call Raquel with my home. I'll never not call Kauai my home. And again, that's what's so great about being here in Utkala because there's so many multicultural people that experience that same like little sadness you have in the back of your head all the time where it's like, I miss home, even though you're home. So yeah, you get it. Like we get it. Yeah. It's just one of those things. How has that, like, your your identity as um, a Native Hawaiian and an Alaska Native, like, how how does that, how has that influenced, you know, who you are today and also, like, some of the work that you do? Um, you know, I'm going to be honest, it's always been a little bit problematic because when I, uh, mo- when I moved over to Hawaii, you know, I didn't move over to, like, a touristy part of town I was moving straight into the heart of the homesteads of Hawaii around Native Hawaiians and when I was there I was strictly known as Eskimo girl you know I was even though I was Native Hawaiian even though my dad was Native Hawaiian when you go into that space um, you, you they see you as something else and that is just like I think that was a natural reaction of course but for me to deal with that as a high schooler was complicated and difficult. It's like, it's so easy to feel insecure about your identity when you're in that headspace of, I'm not, I'm not Native Hawaiian enough. Or even coming on to a Catholic and feeling like, you know, I, I'm, I'm back, but I'm an back who grew up somewhere else. Mm-hmm. So having that part of it was difficult, but at the same time has made me so strong. It's made me so strong with my identity to where I can go out and create both in Inupiaq and Native Hawaiian art, both in Inupiaq and Native Hawaiian jewelry, because I've gone through that phase of feeling I'm insecure about my Native identity to, you know, I don't care what anyone says. I am Native Hawaiian. I am Inupiaq. And there's no problem with that. And so, you know, of course, there's been those times where people have tried to make me feel less less than, but overcoming that has been the biggest blessing of my life because now I feel like I can do anything. Like, you know, I can, I can conquer any kind of issues or insecurities that I have because going through that, it's made me really strong. So when I return to Kauai, you know, I'm no longer Eskimo girl. I'm just Kava. I'm just Kavahine. And when I come to a Catholic, I'm just Kavahine, you know, and that feels awesome and it was hard to deal with but in the end you know feeling secure with my identity it's been a journey and um but it's been awesome like I feel great (laughs) that's good I mean I think that you know I, I love your jewelry and everything that you create, all of your artwork that I see online and mm-hmm. on social media. And, and that's how, like, I feel like I connected with you, you know, it was like through social media. Right. And, um, mm-hmm. and I, I know that you don't just create art, you know, you also have a voice that you like to share. Um, which yeah. is really cool. And I think is super engaging for someone like me who like, not only do I love your artwork, I just love the brain stimulation. You know, it's always like, testing that muscle. you know, like, yes, try to remember and see things back from a rural perspective, you know? Mm. So yeah, I, I, that, that's what I had to kind of decide was, okay, was this, am I doing this? Am I creating art and jewelry because I just want to make an honest living, maybe some profit, or is there something else I want to achieve? And in the end, I just decided, you know, I want others to feel so confident in themselves with their indigenous heritage that they're able to just say what they feel and advocate for things that they're um, passionate about. And in the end, I, I, I accepted I can never inspire others unless I'm able to do it myself, you know. So that's why I when, when I'm passionate about something, whether it's access to resources or 
missing and murdered indigenous women, I really go after, um, you know, walking, walking the walk and being that example before I try and achieve any other kind of goal, such as inspiring other people. So, yeah, I, I, I like that you like those parts of my, <laughs> of my um, art business, because sometimes it is vulnerable when I'm speaking up about an issue I'm passionate about. But that's kind of my goal is just making other people, you know, feel like you can advocate for anything and you should do it so strongly. Um, and you should bring attention to these issues that are really important. And, you know, living through that, um, I really just took a deep breath and put my best foot forward and advocated for issues. Um, and, you know, not, not looking back or not looking down on doing that. Yeah, I, I, I feel like you could have just been like some extra account, you know, that doesn't really address any issues or doesn't really, you know, bring up mm-hmm. certain things in our communities and then just sold your art and your, you know, your, your jewelry like that. Mm-hmm. But and, I could have done that. Yeah. A lot of people do do that. You know <laughs> yeah. I mean? Yeah. Um, people do that. But, but I, I mean, at the same time, there's nothing wrong with that either. Because I know it's hard to make an honest living nowadays, um, especially with COVID. And so, you know, profiting off of um, the art and the work that you do, there's no problem with that. Um, It's just not something I ever saw myself doing was, you know, the goal being having more money in my bank account. Um, It was always something else. Um, And it was always just wanting to make an impact. I think that's, I've always wanted to do that, you know, make some sort of small impact, be able to say what I'm thinking um, unapologetically. And I think through Kavayine Creations, I'm able to do that. And such a blessing too, because um, it's an art business. So you don't want to hear my bickering about Native issues. Hey, you can buy some earrings. Or if you you want to buy some earrings and you don't want to, you know, if you're here for the Native issues, um, there's that too. So. It's like kind of, it's kind of the best word. If you just want earrings, come to my page, buy earrings. But if you also want to know what's going on in my village and with Native issues, you can come and look at that too. So I think yeah. it's, it's I fun. Think that, I think that that's like, uh, I think <laughs> I like it so much because I feel like that's what I do too. You know what I mean? Like <laughs> yeah. I, I could just be that interviewer that just, you know, asks you one, two, three, and then take off or, you know, like that's all the Mm -hmm. podcast episode would be. But I think some of that is also just me engaging, you know, and and Mm -hmm. the the allure. And I think that why people feel like it's um, like worth listening to is maybe because it's like a discussion. It's not just like one person kind of like preaching at you or whatever. It's really just like an engagement. And um, I think that I like to tell myself that I think that people appreciate that part and it's not, I don't know, it could be, it could be something else, but that's just my, (laughs) (laughs) my inclination. Yeah. So when did you get started? I can't, I'm trying to remember when I first saw your stuff and I didn't know if it was like, because it was an Instagram page or if it was like you had started it, you know, I started last year. It was one year ago, February, 2020 was when I decided, you know, this is what I'm going to do. I've always created art and jewelry for family. Why not sell it? So it's been one year and, you know, it's gone really well for the most part. Um, I have been able to sell earrings and prints um, to different, you know, all across the world, which is super cool. I get orders from everywhere, Australia, different countries. And it's been a process learning how to um, make a living this way. But it's been awesome. It's been exciting. And I remember how nervous I was when I first started. I was like, oh, my God, no one's going to buy my earrings are you kidding me no one's gonna want my prints but that first three months finally realizing holy cow people people want to buy my earrings I was so shocked because I was working at the time and now I'm able to just live 
based off of my business, which is exciting and cool. And it makes 